Welcome back, it's still TV3 New Day, and we want to do some health-related issues. I'm sure you know that uh, in 2016, the Pediatric Fractions Solutions, or the o AO uh, Alliance, the AO Alliance launched the Pediatric Fractions Solutions, and uh, that uh, project is aimed at looking at the issues of fractures in children below the ages of 18, and the project is ending this year. So we're talking a bit more about that and about how we can improve fractures in children. I've been joined in studio uh, by Dr. Arthur Sakifius, an orthopedic surgeon at the Focus Orthopedic Hospital here in Accra, and also Akosi Efriye Mensah, who is a project coordinator uh, with the Ghana College of Physicians and Surgeons. She is really going to talk about the AO Alliance, who are the financial muscle for this pediatric fracture solutions. So this was launched in 2016. Let me just come to you. It was launched in 2016, and yes. it's ending in uh, 2020. Exactly. Have we chugged any successes? Um, yes, we have. From 2016 up till now, we've trained over 700 healthcare workers okay. in the management and treatment of pediatric fractures. Mm -hmm. We've also engaged traditional bone setters to know how they treat injuries in children, and we are going to further engage them this year in the proper training and management of injuries in children because you realize that a lot of people still do go to them for treatment. Mm -hmm. And we've engaged um, the four main teaching hospitals. Okay. Currently, as we speak, we have the treatment subsidy in Konfanochi and the Cape Coast Teaching Hospitals where we send them implants, POPs, soft bands, so that if someone, a child goes to the hospital with an injury okay. and is unable to pay for it, the project actually pays for that particular child. Dr. Arthur Sakafia, let me come to you. You are an orthopedic surgeon. And yeah. I just want to, to tell us what an orthopedic um, fracture is. What, what is that? All right. So in, in, pediatric simple fracture. Terms, mm -hmm. in simple terms, the pediatric age is any patient below the age of 18. Okay. And uh, when we talk about a fracture, it's a break in the bone. So once a child who is less than 18 years has an injury to the bone and the bone breaks, we term it a pediatric fracture. How do you know if the bone is broken? Maybe I just twisted my arm. How do right. I know if the bone so is broken? So there's always a story behind an injury. Okay. So we first listen to what the story is. For example, the child may have been playing, fell from a swing, or was at home playing with the mom, or maybe probably fell from a bed, and then... There was a loud cry, which equates some level of pain. So there will be some pain, and then the kid would refuse to move that part of the limb. Okay. So when we talk about limb, we are talking about the arm right from the shoulder area down to the hand, or from the hip area down to your ankle area, which is the lower extremity. Okay. So depending on where the injury is, the mm -hmm. kid would stop using that part of the body, and they will be in a lot of pain and discomfort. Mm -hmm. And uh, if subsequently you'd find that there will be some swelling, and depending on the complexion of the patient, if they are quite fair or sometimes in Caucasians, you'd realize that there are some skin changes. And those skin changes are described as erythematous changes. Okay. It's like it reddens up. So those are the pointers that give us an idea that this could be the problem. Mm -hmm. On a few occasions, uh, particularly within the circles of um, child abuse, where a kid has been abused by um, an unresponsible or irresponsible nanny, you'd find that when mom gets home in the evening and they are bathing the kid, they get to a particular part of the body and the kid really screams in pain. Mm -hmm. So it gives you an idea that there must be some injury of a sort mm. that needs some attention. So those are some of the pointers. A story, examination. Mm -hmm. And, and, and what, what do we do? I mean, I know that usually when it happens, what our grandmothers you know, carried on to us, is that you see parents massaging that area with maybe uh, shea butter. Is that the right thing to do? Is that the first aid? All right, so there are some very basic principles. Mm -hmm. And those principles are quite easy to understand and appreciate. So the child gets an injury, they'll be in pain. So Tylenol is almost always available, or carpal, or okay. let, let's say paracetamol. Paracetamol. It's yeah. always available. You can give some syrup to the child to quieten down the pain. You can comfort them, console them, reassure them, 
And then what we would like to emphasize is that you need to keep the part of the bone that's broken stable. Mm -hmm. So most often than not, you'd find that we have cardboards at home. If you don't have a cardboard and you have a ruler, mm -hmm. you can just apply a ruler to the broken part of the bone and then just gently overwrap it either with a bandage or if you don't have a bandage readily at home, you could use your scarf to keep it stable. Mm -hmm. So a ruler and a scarf wrapped over to keep it stable. So that you aim at making the fracture stable, giving pain medication, and you can wrap some ice in a towel, mm -hmm. a face towel, for example, and apply it to the site where the injury is. That gives some comfort. And we recommend that as soon as this happens and this first aid is applied, you get to the hospital and then we'll take a look at the kid and then recommend the necessary treatment. So, so for how long can I keep that on? Oh, as long as you aid. can, as long as you can reach the hospital, we wouldn't okay. advise an overnight Night. treatment. Mm -hmm. So for example, if it happens, um, let's say 6 p.m., mm -hmm. you should be able to get to the hospital uh, and not pass the night at home. Okay. And one very critical point too is to keep it elevated. So okay. for example, for example, if it's a, um, the forearm that's broken, you've got some two bones in your forearm. Okay. So if that's broken, you can actually put the kid's arm in a scarf and tie it to the neck while the ruler and the other scarf holds it stable okay. and the kid is given some uh, pain medication like paracetamol or carpal or Tylenol. So what happens if I don't keep the, I don't do take, you know, all those precautionary measures so I don't uh, apply the first aid you are recommending? What right. happens? So you can imagine that if you had a cut in the kitchen and somebody was bruising the cut all the time, it mm -hmm. would be extremely painful. Very painful. A similar thing happens to the broken bone. Okay. If you don't keep it stable with the ends and it keeps moving, mm -hmm. there will be a lot of bruising and there will mm -hmm. be significant pain. Mm -hmm. So if the moment the kid tries to lift the arm and there's an abnormal movement, there will be excruciating pain. Mm -hmm. um, again, if you don't apply the ice in a towel. And I need to emphasize that the ice should not be applied directly to the skin. Otherwise, it will get a cold burn. Okay. So you wrap it in a towel so that mm -hmm. it's well padded. If you don't do that, the inflammatory process, which is the pain, the reddening, the warmth that comes with it, will keep mm -hmm. on increasing. And uh, you may end up developing a complication, which we'll speak about soon. Okay. Yeah. So we'll speak about the complication soon. Uh, but I want to know, so... Uh, if, uh, is it possible that a broken bone can be, uh, if you like, resurrected? Yeah. Is it possible to merge a, a broken bone? Sure. Is it possible? Uh, yes. It's broken. Yeah. How but, do you do that? Okay, so um, the, again, there are some principles that if a bone is broken, it's like body tissue that is injured. Okay. It will definitely heal. Okay. But how it will heal is what we are here to advocate and educate the public on. Okay. That... When a bone is broken, you need to determine, is it completely broken or is it partially broken? Mm -hmm. And then again, we need to assess how badly apart is the bone. Mm. So we use x-rays to classify that. Okay. When we look at certain classifications, if it's so badly apart, then we decide, does this bone need a surgical intervention mm -hmm. to bring it together to heal uh, acceptably? Mm -hmm. Or... Should we just leave it and put a POP and allow it to heal over time? Mm -hmm. You can imagine that if you have a wound on your skin, it will definitely heal. Mm -hmm. That's how the body is, uh, you know, created. Mm -hmm. Once there's an injury, there will be mechanisms aimed at healing. Mm -hmm. So indeed, it's true that when bone is broken, it will first start the healing process by forming um, scarred tissue, which okay. we call callus. Okay. And then eventually that callus will mature, mature, mature and the bone will heal mm -hmm. and eventually remodel, mm. aimed at getting you back to the state, the pre-break stage. And this process you can only get at a hospital. You can't use uh, all this orthodox... Uh, uh, the unorthodox the treatment unorthodox methods? The treatments, yeah. We would advise the public not to. The reason being that every well thought through medical condition mm -hmm. has some signs behind its treatment. Mm -hmm. And... Um, I wouldn't hesitate to say that the unorthodox methods are not probably applying those scientific principles and eventually we find that they end up rather causing complications. Mm -hmm. So one needs to actually uh, see somebody who is schooled mm -hmm. in these treatment um, 
and injuries okay. to administer the treatment. Well, well, let's talk about the complications, then I'll go to uh, Akusei Fiemensa mm -hmm. and talk about the AO Alliance. The, what are the complications of a, a bone fracture? All right, so the commonest complication, which is very worrying to us, which we find that eventually may end up um, in an amputation, mm -hmm. is a condition we call compartment syndrome. Okay. What that means is, I'll use my forearm as an example. So the bone breaks, the bone is contained within a compartment. There's like an envelope that wraps the bone. Mm -hmm. If that compartment is still intact and the bone breaks, you bleed and then you bleed into the compartment and the compartment has blood vessels going through to feed your hand. Mm -hmm. Now, when the bleeding is so much that mm -hmm. the pressure within that compartment is overcome by the blood within the compartment, mm -hmm. blood supply to the hand is cut off. Okay. And eventually, it may end up dying because it's not getting enough nutrients, it's not getting enough oxygen. Mm. So that compartment syndrome mm -hmm. is also worsened by strongly tying and wrapping the arm. Mm -hmm. So you'd find that some bone setters will say that, oh, as soon as the injury happens, go to a bone setter, let them tie the arm. Arm for you. Yesterday, for example, I had a patient. That is not advisable. No, not at all. Mm -hmm. Yesterday, I had a patient, a child, who mm -hmm. had a fracture around the elbow area. Mm -hmm. And spontaneously, somebody in the home said, let's go to the bone setter to tie the arm. It's very risky. It's We've very had cases risky. where the arm had to be amputated because of these treatment methods. Amputated? Yes. AO Alliance uh, uh, are the financial muscles for this uh, pediatric fracture solutions. From 2016 till now, uh, have you been able to support a lot more children uh, to correct their bone fractures? Yes. So, as I stated earlier, mm -hmm. in Confanochi and Cape Coast Teaching Hospitals, we are supporting them with implants, POP, soft bands, etc. Okay. And from 2016 up till now, about 320 children have benefited from this treatment subsidy. Okay. Aside that, with the training programs that we've held for um, health workers, the assumption behind it is that if the health workers are better trained mm -hmm. in the proper management of injuries, then they can treat the children who come and see them better. Mm -hmm. Okay, so if you say um, subsidies, how much are you taking off from their total cost? We're actually giving them the implants for free. For free? Yes. But at what point would I need an implant? Um, it depends on, on the type of fracture okay. and, and so how So it's not everybody who needs an implant? No. no. So for those who don't need an implant, what subsidies are you giving them? They, they benefit from the non-operative. That's the use of the POPs. Okay. And those ones too are also free for them. Okay. So for instance, if for maybe I have a fracture and my, my, my child has a fracture, I'm supposed to pay 100 CDs. How much of that are you taking? I'm, I'm just trying for us to be practical here. So it depends. When you go to the hospital, I think that the, the hospital, they also have the fees that they take. Mm -hmm. So for that, the project is not covering that. What we are covering are the materials they will use for the treatment. Okay. So those materials are given to the child for free. But for the hospital fees, the parent or guardian will have to pay for okay, that. So that one was going to attract additional uh, costs if you were not providing it for them. Exactly. Okay, I've seen 320 children so far. Yes. Have you, I mean, was that the target you had in mind? We've actually exceeded the target. We're thinking about 200 children. Mm -hmm. But we realized that there were more cases that were coming. So we had to put in more money to source more implants and and. POPs and things. How much did it cost you? I mean, between 2016 and now, that's four years, right? Or mm -hmm. you don't want to talk about it? <laughs> 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 but, well, we are just trying to appreciate what uh, the pediatric fractions solution is doing for, for children. So that's how come I'm asking. But I mean, your final words, and I'll take yours too as we, as we wrap up. Um, so I just want to talk a bit more about what AO Alliance is. Mm -hmm. um, it's based in Switzerland and it's a developmental um, non-profit organization that seeks to improve fracture care in low and middle income countries, mm -hmm. particularly Africa, the Middle East and in Asia. Okay. And in Africa, we have the English speaking Africa and French speaking Africa. And Ghana happens to one of the beneficiaries of the English speaking Africa. Okay. And um, we have both the pediatric fracture solutions for Ghana mm -hmm. project. 
Okay. which is ending this year, mm -hmm. and the Ghana Country Initiative, which mm -hmm. would end next year. Okay. So if anybody has any questions about AO Alliance, Alliance okay. we're at the Ghana College of Physicians and Surgeons, the research office. If you have any questions, we are there to handle those questions. I'm, I'm really hoping that, uh, you, I mean, this project will not end, especially we want to see a lot more children, you know, uh, benefits from this, but 320 children. Thank you so much. Uh, Dr. Uh, Arthur Sakifi, I was hoping to pick your final words, but we don't have a lot of time. But what he's saying is that if you have a fracture, you have a child who is below the age of 18 who has a fracture, you go to the appropriate quarters. Don't use unorthodox uh, methods. Go to the pediatric fracture solutions. They are still here. Uh, they have the, the rest of the months within the year to wrap up what they're doing so take advantage of the solutions you're offering your child there's a lot